It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Welcome to this week's Power Back episode. Look, I have to tell you, this cracked me up the other day. I was on a discovery call with a new coaching client, and she was like, Laura, you know, I knew that I wanted to work with you the first time that you said fuck. Like, you have a very clear and direct and simple, no bullshit approach, and I love that about you. And honestly, I love that about my clients as well. And you know what? If you're like, I dig that style too, and I really need someone to help guide me in this process of simplifying, expanding, helping to overcome some mindset bullshit, you really, you have this drive. You know, I call you this all the time. You are like a firework in a box. And sometimes you just need someone outside of your own brain to guide you along your journey to help you get to where you actually want to be. So if that's ringing your bell or doing something to you and you're like, you know what, I'm ready to do this. Go to lauraora.com, book a discovery call, and let's make some fucking magic happen. In the meantime, today we're going to talk about simplifying things. Now look, getting into simplification does not need to be complicated. That is kind of the opposite of where we're going here, right? You want to do something, you want to achieve something, you want to make a move, and then you start overthinking it and you make it way more fucking complicated than it needs to be. So that's not what we're doing today, okay? We're not overthinking. We're not making this something that it doesn't need to be. We're going to focus on five very simplistic ways that you can simplify your life and or your business so you can close some of the mental tabs in your brain so you can put that time and energy into the things that really matter. So this exercise is pretty clean. It's pretty simple. I truly want to keep this as easy as possible for you. So I'm going to give you five things that you can do to really, truly, honestly help clear out some of that mental chatter, get some capacity back in your energy to finish some shit. I mean, how many things are just like open and lingering? We're going to finish some shit today. And best yet, however many of these that you choose to do, whether it's one, three, five, four, I don't care. This is up to you. I can't come through this audio and make you do these things. Only you can encourage yourself to do them. So I'm going to be in your ear. I'm going to guide you through these things, but it's up to you. It's up to you to take action. Like you can hear things all day long. You can say you're going to do things all day long, but this is your no bullshit approach to say, if you don't fucking do it, it's not going to get done. So whether you choose to do one or all of them, you are strengthening your muscle. And this is an incredible reminder of how capable you are, how much power you actually have. And when you choose to take action instead of sitting in the mud of your mind, you can give yourself so much time, capacity, energy, and ambition back to do the things that you really want to do. All right, my friends, let's get this party started. First and foremost, going through your calendar. Your calendar gets full of all kinds of shit. And I also want to tell you that this exercise today, this Power Back episode, you can apply in your personal life. You can apply in your business life. You can apply in both of your lives. Like whatever aspect, whichever one fits the bill for you, both, either or, you can do this in both of these. And if you are a business owner, I highly encourage that you do this exercise in both your business and your life. So your calendar, home calendar, your business calendar, all those fucking meetings, all those commitments, everything you said yes to in the past, everything that's reoccurring. I want you to go through your calendar for the next 60 days. Look at it first and foremost. Just see what you got going on. What are your commitments? I want to acknowledge that there are some things that are non-negotiables. There's probably some shit on there that you don't really want to do. Do you want to go sit at soccer practice at 7 o'clock in the morning, two hours away from your house? Probably not, but that is one of the things that you have committed to help your child do. So you're not going to be able to remove everything, and I acknowledge that. But there is some shit that you've said yes to or some stuff that like just no longer serves you that's taken up a lot of capacity in your calendar. So go through the next 60 days of your calendar. And if it's not 100% necessary or a hell yes, I want you to delete it. 
contact whoever you need to contact, send whatever emails you need to you need to send, communicate with whoever you need to communicate with, and you don't have to give explanation. It doesn't have to be this whole, oh, I'm doing this thing, I'm going to, nope, just say, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I Simply, I'm not doing it. Thank you for inviting me, but I am not going to attend this. Thank you for, you know, having me to be a part of this organization. I need to resign. Like, whatever it is that you need to do, allow yourself to do it. You know, like, yes, I will come to that party. And you're like, I don't want to go. I just want to sit at home. My couch is fantastic. I love my pajamas. I have all the right food there. Like, if you just truly don't want to go, allow yourself to decline the invitation. We unintentionally pack our calendars full. There's something about this connection between being busy means being successful. Being busy means being needed. Being needed means that I'm valuable. Look, we could go down a whole rabbit hole with this, and this is the kind of shit that we talk about in coaching together, but I want you to be aware of your calendar is a reflection of your time, of your commitment, where your energy is going. And I want you to have capacity to do more of the shit that you want to do. Because look, if you don't make time for the shit that you want to do, nobody's going to make time for it for you. And you know, you hear me say a lot, the thing that you want the most is often behind the thing that you resist the most. So if you've been craving downtime, if you've been craving flexibility, if you've been craving white space in your life and in your calendar, but you're packing that fucking shit full of a bunch of stuff for a bunch of other people, then you're not getting what you need. You're resisting the very thing that it is that you desire. So go through your calendar, whether that's a printed calendar, a digital calendar, on your iPhone, however you schedule out your life. Go through the next 60 days and allow yourself to remove anything that isn't necessary or is a hell yes. Number two, my friends, finish one thing that you have been putting off. You know that thing you keep procrastinating on, that phone call that you need to make, that doctor's appointment that you need to schedule, that part of the project that you need to finish, whatever that lingering thing is that goes from this week's list to next week's list to the following week's list, and it just kind of keeps hanging out there, that shit is draining your energy, my friend, and it's got to get done. More often than not, that thing that you keep procrastinating on it's going to take you minutes of your life. And you're going to be like, why the fuck didn't I do this sooner? <laughs> Look, I'm guilty of this too. I've done it before. I've put off like making calls. I had, a, I had a doctor's appointment that I needed to make and I just didn't want to deal with it. And I didn't want to call him and I didn't want to go through my schedule. And blah, blah, blah. Oh my gosh, Laura. It took me like three minutes the other day and now it's done and I'm not thinking about it anymore. And that's the thing, like not doing the things that you need to finish is taking up so much capacity in you. It's really hard to focus on new ideas, new exciting things that you want to do, places that you want to go, ways that you want to expand your business, whatever is calling you next in life. It's really hard to dedicate the time and energy to those things when you're constantly fucking looking behind you. You're always thinking about that thing you got to do. And it's adding unnecessary stress to your life and to your schedule. So what is one thing, at bare minimum, one thing that you keep rolling over that you can complete today? And I'm going to toss in a little bit of accountability. When you do this, I want you to message me on Instagram. DM me. I'm at that Laura Aura. And tell me what you got accomplished. I'm going to throw in a little accountability in there because this one is huge. I mean, fucking huge. The second it's done you're going to feel 400 pounds lighter in your brain. Like you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I have so much time left. I have so much ability. Like I'm, I'm clear headed. I can do some shit now. This stuff is eating up your energy. Get the shit done today. The next one is an exercise that you can do from the comfort of your couch. And that is to go through your phone and to delete any apps that are draining your time, your energy, or your bank account. We accumulate a lot of apps. You download the thing, you're at the funky restaurant, and they have the app, you're at the museum, and they've got the app, and like all this stuff is happening, you see something on TikTok, and immediately you got to run and go download it. Look, we just accumulate stuff, and stuff holds energy, and 
especially if it's holding space on your phone, you're on it all the time. I mean, literally, like who isn't walking around with this thing like glued to their ass so that you can pull it out at any given moment? Your apps hold energy. And sometimes you got to go through and clean the slate. Now, I will tell you that the trick with this exercise is to not go down the rabbit hole of like going into the apps and then like doing all the thing. And then before you know it, you're looking at stuff. This is a quick black and white evaluation. Am I using it? Is it adding value to my life? Is this like a good thing for me? Then keep it. I'm not making you get rid of anything that you want. What I am encouraging you to do, however, is to release things that are just simply taking up space. And yes, it's taking up like technology space, but it's taking up energetic space as well. So if these are, you know, the $2.99 a year or the $9.99 a year apps that you haven't used in three years, delete the subscription, delete the app. If it's something that you just get sucked into a black hole all the time and you know it's really causing issues in your life, delete it. And if you're like, no, I just really want to keep it because we all know that TikTok is a black hole. (laughs) I fall in that hole myself as well. If you want to keep something, but also like give yourself a little bit more boundary around it, set time limits on it. Like I have time limits on Facebook because if I'm on there for too long, it sucks the energy out of my ass and then I don't like it. So I have a max of like 15 minutes a day on Facebook. It just doesn't do anything for me. But it's one of those tools that I need to keep around for various reasons. So that's a way for me to set a boundary. Freshen up the space where you're spending a lot of time. Put a new wallpaper on. Put your apps into categories so that things are easier to find. Deleting things that you just simply don't use and you always have to scroll through. This is such a very simple exercise, but it's a very impactful one because you spend a lot of time on a regular basis looking at your phone. And if every single interaction with your phone is so much here, oh, I got to find it. Oh, I don't know where this is. Oh, I need to cancel that. Your brain is forever trying to play whack-a-mole with all of these things every single time you get on the phone. Look, if I looked at your screen time or your behavior on your phone, look, I'm not gonna unless you want me to. But if I did and it showed how many times you turn on your phone every day to unlock it or look at it, that number is mind-blowing. And if you think about if you're doing that 50, 100, 300 times a day, oh yeah, I've seen all kinds of numbers. If you're doing that 100 times a day, picking up your phone and looking at it, that's 100 times a day that you're thinking, ugh. And is that how you want to spend your energy? Is that how you want to spend your time? No. So clean it up, simplify it, and it will refresh the shit out of you every single time that you open up your phone. All right, let's move on to number four, clearing out one area of clutter. You accumulate shit. You get the mail, it goes on the table. You get the emails, it goes into a folder. You have the desk and it's got a bunch of shit on it. What We accumulate stuff that we want to deal with later. That kind of ties back into the one earlier about finishing one thing that you've been putting off. But now we're going to like take it one step further and clear out a space that consistently has clutter. So whether that's a drawer that just catches everything, that every time you open it up, you're like, ugh, this fucking drawer. Maybe it's your kitchen table that has a bunch of mail and paperwork and shit that you need to finish and just like kids' paperwork and all kinds of stuff. It's accumulated over the months. Clean it up. Maybe it's your desk where you're working and doing your stuff. It's really hard to think clearly when you're sitting in the like pile of stuff around you. And if we go technology wise, this could be your email, cleaning out your email, unsubscribing from some junk, or going through like if your messenger or your DMs just have like numbers upon numbers upon numbers, and you're just like, I don't even know what's going on and it's freaking me out. Give yourself the opportunity today to clear one area of clutter. Again, if you want to go further, go further. But cleaning up one thing that keeps like grabbing your attention is going to allow you to take your attention and put it to something better. And you deserve the space, the clear space to do the work that you want to do to enjoy your meal in the space that you eat, to sit on your couch and look around and feel good and wholesome around your environment to not want to rip your eyes out with rusty spoons every single time you open your email. Like this stuff takes up capacity. And when you clear out the clutter, it's kind of contagious because you'll do it in one area and you're like, okay, I did that. That feels good. 
now I can do it again. Over the holiday break, I cleaned out my pantry. Look, stuff gets lived in, right? Like boxes get thrown in there and this thing's actually empty, but we still have the box in there and like all the bags get all jumbled in the bottom and ugh, like life just happens. So I got a couple of bins because I'm a nerd and a like a sucker for organizing. And I pulled a bunch of stuff out of the closet. I threw away a bunch of things that weren't needed anymore. I donated some stuff. I gave some things to some family members. I put some new fresh bins in. And you know what? Every single time that I open that pantry now, I go, ah, oh, feels way better. I'm not constantly thinking about, oh, that thing needs done. Oh, that irritates me. Oh, that frustrates me. Oh, I don't like the way that that looks. So give yourself the honor and the time of clearing out one thing that is holding a bunch of clutter in your life. Last but not least is going through your closet. Oh yeah, you got all kinds of shit in there, don't you? (laughs) The shirts that you'll get into one day, the jeans you'll get back into, this thing that you're going to wear to that thing that doesn't really exist, but we've made up in our minds. Like our closets hold so much stuff, holds a lot of energy, and it holds a lot of expectations of what we should be. And whether that's based on changing who you are, the size you are, or the body that you're in right now, or the expectation that you need or should dress and be and act and show up in a certain way. Every time that you get into your closet or in your drawers or wherever it is that you keep the things that you put onto your body, it's a reminder that you're not good enough, that you should be something else, that you need to be different. And you know what? None of that has to be true anymore. That ongoing dialogue inside of your mind every single time you go to get dressed or get yourself ready for the day, you don't have to do that anymore. So this exercise is to go through at least one area, whether that's one dresser drawer, one entire dresser, one side of your closet, one bin or basket, and let go of anything that makes you feel any less than who you truly are. The old jeans, you don't have to get back into anything, are who you are today outfits, the clothes, the colors that you're like, wow, this is safe. This is what I'm supposed to do. Donate it. And you know what? If you end up with five pieces of clothing in your closet, then that's what you get to start cycling through until you rediscover who you are and allow yourself to add pieces that truly represent the true version of yourself. Because you don't need to lose the weight. You don't have to get back into an old version of you. Because Because that season has closed. You're in a new fresh season now, my friend. And you get to choose things that go on your body that illuminate who you truly are. And if you're not ready to like replace your whole ass closet, okay, you don't have to. But if you get rid of, and when I say get rid of, I mean responsibly. Donating, giving away, doing something with it so that these pieces move on to another home. By removing these items, you get to look at your stuff every day and be like, you know what? I may not have everything that I want yet. I may not be where I want to be yet, but these are things that I feel good in. These are things that are an expression of who I am. And if you're still figuring out who that is or what that you know fashion expression is, then allow yourself to be curious and play with it. But the for the sake of today's exercise, choose one drawer, closet, bin, or basket and responsibly donate or remove the items that make you feel like something that you're not. The common thread throughout all of these activities today is capacity, brain capacity, energetic capacity, time capacity. All of these little areas Boil down to power leaks, areas of your life and in your business where you are unintentionally giving away parts of yourself. And by going through and simplifying, cleaning up, finishing, removing, you start to take back all of those pieces of yourself. And I know that these things may seem small, but they add up. And when you've got six, 12, 20, 100 different little tabs open in your mind on a regular basis, You can't put that energy into the forward-moving thinking. When you want to go do something that you want to do, 
it's no wonder you're tired. Or maybe you're thinking, I'm just uninspired and I don't, I don't know what's going on with me. Small, intentional exercises like this help to relight that fire. So you can build a new business plan, so you can expand your services, so that you can increase your pricing or take the trip or be present with your family. Little things add up. Don't underestimate the power of how impactful these small yet monumental changes can make. I would love to hear from you legitimately. So if you're on Instagram, that's where I tend to be the most. I lie. I'm on TikTok the most, but you can only message people if you're following people and it's a whole weird dynamic. So on Instagram, come over there, say hello, and tell me which one of these or all of these that you completed today and how it made you feel once it was done. I would love to celebrate with you and answer any questions or comments that came up in this process. So again, on TikTok and Instagram, I am at that Laura Aura. Next week's episode of the Gutsy Podcast, episode 147, is about turning your website into a gold mine. So if you are a small business owner, whether you are starting a brand new business and need to build a website, or you already have one and know that some adjustments can and need to be made. Um, Next week's episode is packed full of really powerful information that's going to help take your website from, you know, something that maybe looks good and people can find to something that actually generates the leads and income that you're looking for. If you took something powerful away from today's episode, I would love and appreciate if you could share the Gutsy Podcast with your network. Tell them what you love about the show, what you take away from the show. And if you're feeling extra little saucy, if you could leave us a review on Apple Podcast, it helps other listeners to know what to expect and how their lives and businesses can be impacted. You can find me on all the platforms using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay Gutsy.